How much boost does an electric supercharger make? Stop asking that question. It's the wrong question, but I'm gonna answer it anyway. Since I'm dumb enough to spend thousands of my own dollars developing an electric supercharger that actually makes some power and actually works, I guess that puts me at some level of qualification to answer the question of how much boost does it make? And that does make me die a little bit inside every time I get asked that question because it really is the wrong question to ask. But in case you're wondering, I'm gonna tell you. In fact, I'm gonna show you. So let's take a look at one of our track data logs. So right here, you can see where the sort of teal blue line is that we made exactly 10 PSI. We made 10 PSI for this whole period of time. So does that answer your question? How much boost it can make? 10 PSI, there you go. Now that all the dumb people have clicked off, let's get a little bit deeper into this because it's not a good question to ask simply because the right question to ask if you're gonna ask a simplified form of the question is how much horsepower does it support? Because while we made 10 PSI right in this, in this range, in fact, the average is 9.983 over that span. And I can probably make it an honest 10 PSI. There we go. 10.01 PSI. So 10 PSI exactly over a span of pretty much exactly a half a second. That's kind of useless. Why? Because we are on the trans brake. That is the white trace here that tells you that it's holding on the two-step at an average of what 3300 rpm i think i had the trans brake set for somewhere around 33 34 i don't remember what it was set to here but by the way this actually resulted in wheel spin if you look at the white line in the graph here why it's not smooth is because well this right here this little lump that's wheel spin right out of the hole what supercharged corvette i've never seen it it just annihilated the tires off the I line. I know, I saw that. That left lane was horrible, but my God, it felt so much faster that time. Now, if we look at the compressor map, this is why it's not such a good question to ask, but let's take a look at the compressor map here. Looking at the compressor map, 10 PSI is about 0.66 bar or so, which is a pressure ratio of about 1.66, obviously. So that would put us somewhere right around the 35,000 RPM impeller line. And if you look at the numbers down below, the corrected mass flow numbers, just basically multiply those by 10 and that gives you approximate horsepower. That's a pretty good rule of thumb. You can see we're somewhere between maybe 300 and I don't know, 600 horsepower thereabouts, but that's a 3,300 RPM on a six liter V8. Now, what's more important is what we ended up doing when we're going down track, when the car is actually in its power band and making peak power. So once again, we'll look at the data log here and that will answer some more relevant questions. So while more realistically, just popping back real quick to the uh, compressor map, while more realistically, we were probably at about the, I don't know, somewhere around 350, 400 horsepower, somewhere in there on the leave. That's why we saw 10 PSI. The reality here is on the data log, when we were at peak power, which happens about 6,000, 6,100 RPM, we were only seeing about six PSI. Again, the red line is the, the boost graph. So, but six PSI here on this graph represents an honest to God 800 horsepower because the base engine makes over 500 horsepower, just over, not too much at the flywheel. Now that also doesn't jive with our dyno test because it's a glide and that's a whole nother video that's going to make me yell at the camera too and I don't really want to do that right now. So going through the traps, we were just a hair under 6 PSI, but I would say for the bulk, let's just look at high gear because again, this is a power glide, it's only got two speeds. You know, basically the high gear pull saw an average boost of 6.14 PSI. That's not a lot, you say. Yes, but it's more power per horsepower than the most efficient supercharger or the most efficient turbo can possibly make per pound of boost. 37, 38,000 impeller RPM is the most we're able to realistically get on this particular compressor. There's another question that people, well, it's not really a question. There's another comment that people like to put forth and say, that's not fast enough. Turbos spin at 100,000 RPM. Yeah, little tiny itty bitty turbos do spin that fast. This thing has a six inch exducer diameter. So it's, it's you know, 
it's much bigger and that's why it happens to work so i mentioned earlier that i'm a fool who spent thousands of dollars to figure this out and in that time with all kinds of different motors and escs and things that have blown up and things that didn't work that terribly well I've zeroed in on what's kind of the nexus of efficiency for, I would say, amounts to 95% of the engines out there, at least the engines that people would be interested in hopping up. And that is this one specific combination. And if you join our forum at electrifiedboost.com, yes, this is a bit of a pitch for the forum, but it helps answer questions because, you know, I only have so much time in a day, but there's lots of people on that forum who are willing to chime in. You can ask your questions there and there are people who are doing different things. The last video was the twin motor setup of the P2, but it has to be in a very specific RPM band to match the engine as precisely as possible. That's what it all boils down to at the end of the day. You know, I happen to have just off to my right because I caught it on a sale. Another one of these lovely Castle Creations 2028 motors. These are the sweet spot of cost versus power and incidentally this is a 20 horsepower motor yep it's 20 horsepower i know there's people who don't seem to understand that that's a 20 horsepower motor and how can this possibly be well because it spins at 50,000 rpm that's that's really how because horsepower is work over time you know you could have a million foot pounds of torque but if it takes three days to make a revolution you're going to be making almost no horsepower this doesn't make that much torque but it makes a lot of revolutions and that's how the work gets done. Horsepower and Watts, they're all measurement of work. Things like amperage and torque are not. Without any voltage, you can't do any work. It doesn't matter if you have a million amps. Same thing with torque. You could have a million foot pounds of torque, no RPM, no horsepower. I did buy that castle motor because I already have one plus it's already built in a P2 supercharger setup that you've seen videos of. I have a second P2 supercharger. Now I have a second castle motor. You can see where this is going. As soon as Alex Labs is finished and we have the dyno installed, we're gonna try all kinds of different combinations. You know, compound electric superchargers, uh, twin, more conventional twin electric supercharger setups. We can test it all. And it's not something you can do with other turbos or superchargers because how do you drive them? The installation is a nightmare. Here you just pile them on. You can add 20 of these things if you want. That's really the beauty of it. Never mind the efficiency aspect of it as well. So please click like and subscribe. It helps this fool pay for all this research that then I love to share with you all. I love to hear all your comments as well. And yeah, I'm going to catch you all in the next one as usual.